Hey guys, it's Emily. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing something a little bit different. We are going into puzzle accessories. Recently, I have gotten a lot of questions of what I currently use. Some have asked about my puzzle table. Some people have asked of what I use for sorting. And so I wanted to give you an updated video of what I currently use for puzzle accessories. Now, some of these things are not necessary. Like when I first started puzzling, I had a table and a puzzle and that's all I had. And that's totally cool. Like I survived perfectly fine. And there are a lot of other options out there and DIY options, cheaper options out there that people have suggested to me in the past. So if I can think of any when I'm talking about these items, I'll definitely let you know. I also wanted to give you an update on my puzzle table. It has officially been a year since I purchased the all four jig puzzle table. And I wanted to give you a updated review on that since I have had it for officially a year. It has gotten a lot of heavy use and you guys can see how it looks one year later. So we're going into all of that today. If you want to skip ahead, I'll make sure to leave timestamps. And if you're interested in any of these products and I happen to find a link for it, I'll link it down below. But some of these I have had for a really long time and some of these were local. So I don't necessarily know where they are online, but if I can find something similar, I'll let you guys know. I also want to ask you what you currently use. Please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to strike up a conversation down there to have more ideas of what other people use. And it may also be helpful for someone who's new to puzzling and don't necessarily want to go out and buy a bunch of accessories. They may want other alternatives to what I currently use. So this is all just personal preference and we're just going to get into this. I'm excited. Starting off with one random accessory that is new to me and honestly I got it because I was going to do a video that was testing random puzzle accessories. I had gotten this and I had gotten like the scoop that Puzzle Warehouse does where it's like a magnifying glass which also like scoops up puzzle pieces. I don't use it. Like I bought it six months ago or so and I was I haven't used it once I haven't had a need for it so for me that was not something I needed some people love it especially if you have tired eyes it can really help with the magnifying I think it also has a light on it like I haven't used it at all at the same time I also got this this is a box top stand there's a lot of different variations out there in knockoff brands um, I got this one on the Puzzle Warehouse website because I had a gift card at the time but I think it is actually cheaper on Amazon but this is a box top stand, but it also has a little slot if you want to put a poster in there as well. Um, the poster, it's such a small spot that it just flops over, but if you have it like folded up, it can easily like sit in this slot too. I didn't think this was necessary because I lived perfectly fine without it for so many years. And I often will just have like the box top like being supported by the bottom, but sometimes it is nice to have your pieces in the box that it came in. And so I have actually liked this because it keeps it completely secure. Like I don't have to worry about it at all. I'm also someone who is notorious for losing the box top, not really losing, but misplacing it. Like it will go like on a chair or maybe I put it on the floor and I'm constantly like searching for it versus when I have it on this, it's there. I put it there at the very beginning of the puzzling and it just, stays put and it's just very convenient. It's a good angle. Um, I have used it with like the little boards if it has a board instead of a, a box top. Again, I will fold puzzle. I will fold the poster that comes in and put it here too so it can like lean up. So it has been a very handy item. Do I think it's necessary? No. Have I enjoyed using it? Yes. Do I think you should put it on your Christmas wish list? Maybe like it's a good stocking stuffer for a puzzle lover for sure. I have Christmas on the brain, by the way, like I've been doing so much holiday prep. So next let's move into puzzle sorting. I have a few different methods that I have used in the past. I definitely have a preferred method now, but we're just going to go into what I have on hand and one of these may be your solution. Um, so first off, I have these guys here. They came with my puzzle board that I was using in temporary housing. I use these a ton when I was there because we didn't have a ton of space to work with. And these don't take up much space. You know, they're not a box or anything. They're just these little flat felt surfaces. Um, you can snap them to be boxes, but then like the bottom is pretty round. So I don't think this is my preferred method, but I did enjoy using them when I was in to temporary housing when I was sorting pieces by shape because there are I think six of them here and I could easily just put them there they're super flat to stack on top of each other and I liked it for that 
Um, I don't think this is my like preferred method, but they are convenient and I did like it when it came with the puzzle board. So if you can find it in like a set, I totally, and I, like, I think it's a good addition, you know? Um, these guys here I've had for years. Um, I got them at Hobby Lobby. You may be able to still find them. I feel like I've seen them like off and on, but these are some stackable puzzle sorter boxes. You can find so many different alternatives on Amazon. They're nothing special. They're just like these little flat, they have a tiny lip on them. You can just put them all out and they work perfectly I and mean, they work really great. I like that there is a lip so you can have like a few layers of puzzle pieces without it like falling over. What I have used them a lot in the past for is since we do have cats, I will use this when I know a puzzle is going to be out on display for a while and I may not come back to it for a few days. And to avoid the cats having the puzzle pieces, I will sort into these first and then I'll just, you can just stack them on top of each other. I've had a complete 1000 piece puzzle in here before, just stacked in here with the cover on and it's worked perfectly fine. And I've had no issues with the cats stealing the puzzle pieces. So you don't necessarily have to have this, but a lot of you have asked about what I do sometimes for cats. And that has been a method that I've used for a while that does work. Um, and so that definitely helps me to keep puzzle pieces safe if they're sorted and I don't want a cat to mess with them or children maybe or a husband because Dave also will steal puzzle pieces sometimes just to be the person who puts the final piece in. Another thing that I have used quite a bit is my puzzle table does have these removable drawers. They're nice because they're a good size and they can be hidden away too in my puzzle table if I need to. Um, but they're nice and flat. I can usually a 500 piece I will use two of. If I'm doing a thousand piece I'll use all four. But I like it because it is really sturdy and I can move them around with no issues without pieces falling out and so I have used that as well. However, I'm seeing all these like random products that are quite pricey or just hard to find. Um, I also am a huge, huge fan of foam board. I use foam board for so many things. So I've had a couple sets that I got on Amazon. It's definitely cheaper to maybe if you had a sale at Michael's. I've also gotten some at the Dollar Tree. For me, the ones at the Dollar Tree aren't as wide. So I do prefer the ones that I've gotten at Amazon or Michael's more but i i use them for so many things i will definitely use it for just laying all the pieces on there recently i've been doing some trickier puzzles so i can sort by shape and have like a massive four to go with i have also have got broken these up so you can get like four smaller boards out of this so that way if you're doing puzzle pieces by shape or if you just want a smaller thing that you're moving around I have cut these up and it's been completely fine. I often will store my puzzles on here if I'm doing a video and I need them all on a surface. If you're someone who are starting like a, your own puzzle Instagram, it's great because you can do your puzzle on your table and then move it to wherever lighting is so you can take pictures. So I use these constantly and they're affordable. So I, again, you can find them at the Dollar Tree. You can get them on sale places. I get a stack of six on Amazon and they're larger. So like the size fits a thousand piece perfectly with no issues. So I'll link this set down below because I feel like it's like the perfect set, perfect size. And that can be tricky to find in stores. So I'll link those down below if you're curious. Also, these are really great if you have a larger puzzle than your table. This is great for taping together because it's an affordable way to extend your puzzle table. So I've done that before where I, where I have taped four pieces together to do a 2000 piece before and it worked great. And I'll say though, if it is over the side of your puzzle table if you, and you have cats, it might be bendy. So just to let you know, um, because I have had some fails before with that. Um, I also want to mention foam board because I use it often if I am happening to tape a puzzle or like right now I am in this phase where I'm switching up the background here. And so I can easily flip a puzzle over if I have two sandwiching the puzzle, which works great for that. It's also really good even if you're just puzzling here you don't really have another need for it. I you often will puzzle on the phone board because I can easily rotate it without having to move my spot on the table. So there's just so many good different uses. It's such a great option to have in your little home repertoire. And what is also nice is that it's very compact. They're easy to store. Often it's behind a piece of furniture. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to show you those because I use it for so many things. 
moving on to other surfaces that I have used for puzzling. I have this table here currently that we got local at a consignment shop. What is great about it is that it is one that has a, a leaf, but it's built into the table. So I can move this open and the leaf is underneath it. So I can lift that leaf up and it becomes quite large. I think it becomes like an eight foot long table. It's quite big, which is really cool. I didn't have this for a very long time though. This is a recent purchase since we bought our house. Um, so before I just used whatever table we had, we had this other tiny room table we had since we were not even engaged. I think we had gotten it when we first got our first home apartment together. And that worked perfectly fine. It was just a rectangular table. I don't suggest getting a circular dining room table if you're thinking about using it for puzzling. I have done that before and you lose so much space. So uh, I don't recommend that method. But I used to use this table here. We are very fortunate that we have this whole space for me to puzzle, which is awesome. But other things that I have used, like when we were in temporary housing, we did not have this setup. We had a very, very small table that was used for so many things. And so what I ended up purchasing during that time was this puzzle board. This is a good option. I don't think it would have been my favorite option. I hadn't really experienced puzzle boards before. So I just got this one because it was so compact. I mean, it's completely flat and I could hide it underneath the couch if I needed to, to keep it away from the cats um, or just to make more space. It does come with this nice little cover, which is great. That's super flexible that I can just easily remove and put back on while I'm puzzling. So that way the board be, is protected. I will say this one is like a cushiony type of fabric, which is, it looks fine from a distance, but when you look up close, you can definitely tell that the cats, you can see their paw prints. And I don't know how to get that indentation out um, because other than that, it looks perfectly fine. It's just these little like divots in the fabric from where the cats walked on it. And it's not like they even clawed on it, they just walked on it. This one also is a little bit flexible, so you have to be careful when moving the puzzle because if you bent it the wrong way, you can lose it. I don't think this is the best solution, but it was something that I used quite frequently when we were in Tech Bria housing and it did the job. And I wanna say it was relatively affordable. Um, and it did come with it again these like felt things so if you are short on space and you want like a particular item not necessarily foam board or maybe if you want a cover you can use this too so it, it worked you know I definitely like this if you have other options let me know down in the comments below um, but it is what I used and it did do the trick moving into my puzzle table I have had it officially a year and I will say it's been a year of heavy use. It's not one that I've only used it like once a month. There are some weeks that I'm using it every single day and not necessarily just like keeping it out, but I am taking it out every single day, putting it away every single day, using it every single day. Like I've used it a ton. The only time I really didn't use it was when we were in temporary housing and it was in storage. So it was moved about six times during that trip because um, they had packed it, they moved it from a whole different bunch of different warehouses and trucks, and it arrived here. So I feel like some of the wear and tear that I see on the puzzle table currently is because of the transition and the move, because I don't remember them packing it in a box. I think they wrapped it, and then other things were sitting on top of it. So I wanted to mention that because I do think some of the wear and tear isn't necessarily from puzzling, it is from being moved so aggressively <laughs> across the country, so, or at least up the coast. So I just wanna preface that. Um, I feel like it's still in really great condition. I will say, just to be transparent, I made that video completely on my own. Um, I purchased the puzzle table, I did the review completely honest, gave a lot of critiques about it, and since then I have become an affiliate with them because they did enjoy my feedback in that video. And if you are a part of the Facebook group, you know that they have also asked about future puzzle tables and preferences and they're really trying to get a good product out there. So I really enjoy that they are wanting to improve their product 
And so I do want to mention that because if you do use my link for purchasing the puzzle table, I do make a commission. Um, but I, honestly, I really don't care if you get whatever you need. I just want to give you my honest opinion about what it currently looks like. So the felt itself still looks in pretty good condition considering how much I've used it. I do have one corner that is weird looking and it's not because of the felt or the puzzling, it's because of a cat. Um, the cats don't sit on it when it's angled because there are three different like pockets where you can like put it at different angles. They don't touch it when it's at its angle, but there was one night and I should have known where I had left it unattended completely flat and it, that is when a cat decided to claw at one corner. I was able to salvage it pretty close to looking okay. Um, I used one of those little like sweater pillar type things to remove some of the pills that had come up. But there's still like a little bit of like weirdness in that corner. So if you have cats, they may enjoy scratching at it. So just as a warning. As far as if I like the felt, I do. Now, if you are someone who likes to be able to move large sections or like pick up large sections, like have no issues or resistance, this is not going to be the puzzle table for you because felt does help it stay up. You know, when it's at its angle, you don't want the puzzle to, to slide down. So when it's at its angle, the felt does keep it to stay put. And so I appreciate that because I often do puzzle with the angle and so it's nice that it's not going to be sliding everywhere. So I like that feature, but I understand why some people don't like the felt backing. I also wanted to mention with the felt backing is that puzzle dust does stick to it. And so you often have to use, I use sometimes a vacuum, sometimes I use just a lint roller to get the puzzle dust off to make it look nice, if I'm, especially if I'm filming. And it has, I feel like, made it a little bit pilly, I guess you would call it. Um, so I feel like the, the felt itself just needs a little maintenance quite frequently. So usually after like three or four puzzles, I'm using the lint roller to get the cat fur and the lint off, or I'm using the pillar to like get the little bits off. So it is a little bit of maintenance. I do think though, after a year, the felt looks way better than I was expecting, especially since I use it so frequently. So I do think it looks pretty good one year later. I do think that the the top part is bending on the sides. And I feel like that is the biggest part of wear and tear that I can see. And not a crazy amount, but definitely enough to notice. Because I used to be able to lay one of my um, foam boards on it and it would be completely flat. Now there is definitely like a bow happening, but it didn't start happening until after we moved. So I have a very big suspicion that it was because boxes were on top of it um, because it didn't have any type of issues with that until again, since when we unpacked it, that's when I started showing. So don't put heavy things on the sides because there's really no support there. Um, so I did want to mention that it might be because there's also no support on the sides when it's lifted. So that may be a reasoning why too, but I didn't notice it until after the move. So I don't know which one it is, um, but I did want to mention that just so you are aware. Um, I do enjoy the drawers. The drawers are a great feature because I use it often even when I'm not using the table itself. Um, I do like the little short legs. You know, I sit underneath it on the floor but I have never really used it on a table surface um, because you can put it on a table with the legs folded in and use that at an angle that way. I haven't used it that way, so I can't really speak to that. I often will be using it on the floor, watching TV with my legs underneath it, with a cat underneath. Like for me, it's a very cozy spot. I can understand if you have some difficulties getting up from the floor. This may not be the puzzle table for you, but I have really enjoyed it and I do still think it was a great investment for me because I have puzzled way more in the evening now and that just made me do more puzzles for my channel which is great. Um, so that's the puzzle table that I have currently and I will definitely continue using it. I still really enjoy it. I did also want to mention a few of your ideas that you have used as well. Some people, especially if you have pets and you need to have your puzzle protected, for me often I will put 
just another piece of foam board on top with something heavy to keep the foam board from moving but others have used a almost like a school trifold type board instead so something you'd use like for the science fair you can do the puzzle in the middle and then you can fold it and protect it in the evening or when you're done puzzling so that is also a great option that i've heard many people use also, I've seen a lot of people when I was at the puzzle convention using like cookie sheets for sorting pieces. So that may be something you already have in your home where you can just use a cookie sheet or just a piece of cardboard, you know, um, or just other box tops. Like I know a lot of people will use box tops as well. Um, for me, I like the foam board method. I just use it for so many different things. There's so many uses for it for me. And I really enjoy it like that's it. definitely my my favorite go-to product right now the things that i really use on i feel like a weekly basis this guy here <laughs> uh, the little box top stand definitely foam board and then my puzzle table those are the things that i feel like if for some reason all of our stuff disappeared those are the things probably just the foam board and the puzzle table like i'd be fine um with my puzzle accessories so that's it for me thank you so much for tuning into this video i hope it was helpful and i hope you all have a fabulous day bye guys